So we're back with another Coelacanth deck. Sadly, with Foolish Goods Limited and Toad Band, we have to rely on janky three card combos that involve using Transmodify or Small World. It's not very consistent, but that's not gonna stop us from trying to summon our big fish. So in this Coelacanth deck, we will summon Goatee Enoch using Coelacanth, then use its effect to banish one fish from the hand or field to add a Goatee Trap card to our hand. We will banish Enoch and then add Goatee Cosmos to the hand. Goatee Cosmos will allow you to apply effects and sequence based on the number of banished fish monsters. If you have one fish banished, your fish monsters cannot be destroyed by battle this turn. If you have four banished, then your fish monsters cannot be destroyed by battle this turn, and they cannot be negated this turn. And if you have eight banished fish, then you will have all the previous effects, plus you'll be able to special summon one fish synchro monster from your extra deck, and this is treated as a synchro summon. Banishing four fish with this deck will be very easy. We'll be using effects like Snopios, Shift, Leaf Fish, so we'll at least be able to summon a Deep Beyond that cannot be negated. The Coelacanth combo also involves summoning Dragite to protect us from spell and traps, and Ice Shade Jameer to protect our fish from being banished and from being destroyed by card destruction. So if your opponent cannot destroy your fish in battle, they cannot be negated, they can't be banished, and they can't be destroyed by card effects. So what can your opponent do to remove your monsters? And it looks like I spoke too soon. The opponent happens to have an ultimate slayer. We won't be able to respond with ultimate slayer with a monster effect. We'll have to respond to ultimate slayer with a spell. Now Jameer can chain itself to the spell. Now all of our monsters are protected from card destruction and from banishment. Ultimate Slayer will then shuffle Jameer back into the deck, which is fine since Jameer is a lingering effect. And we're going to banish the field with Deep Beyond anyway. The opponent tries to destroy Goatee Cosmos, but Goatee Cosmos is also a lingering effect. We have more than 4 fish banished, so Goatee Cosmos will protect our fish from battle, and their effects and activations cannot be negated. So our opponent's going to special summon here, and we're going to respond with a Max C. Now this is not one of those replays where Max C decides the game. The opponent tries to destroy Paces, but Jameer is still protecting it. Then they use another Ultimate Slayer to shuffle Dragite back into the deck. And then they special summon another Ancient Warrior. We're going to respond to that summon with our Paces. Using Snopios, we will Synchro Summon into our Askan. Snopios will then add itself to the hand, and the opponent scoops knowing that we're gonna summon Deep Beyond. And we're going second against another Ancient Warriors deck. They've activated a Feather Duster, so we'll have to activate our Goatee Cosmos a little early. The opponent then makes a misplay here and activates a Droplet. Now it doesn't matter if your opponent negated your fish monsters with Droplet or Dark Ruler No More or any negation. As long as you resolve Goatee Cosmos with 4 or more fish banished, then your fish monsters will still be able to activate their effects that turn. So Goatee Cosmos basically says, no you cannot stop me from teaching this fish how to synchro summon. They did use Droplet to negate Jameer. You can make an argument that Jameer should be activated before the main phase 1, in case your opponent does have a Droplet or Dark Ruler no more. And they pop the Askan, but that's fine because we're going to banish a fish from the graveyard to add Snopios to our hand, and then use Snopios to banish Askan and Zep to special summon Snopios, and Askan banishes a fish from the graveyard to special summon itself. We'll use Snopios to target the opponent's card. Askan special summons to the field, and Zep also special summons to the field. We'll activate Zep. and we'll synchro with Snopios into a white or a whale. And we're off to the next replay. So in this replay, we're going first against Spiral. Now we're going to activate Maxi, and I promise you, Maxi did not decide this game. And our opponent's going to give us plenty of draws here. Spiral does a lot of special summoning. And yes, I did just draw into a Grass Looks Greener. In this replay, I'm using a 60 card variant with Grass Looks Greener. The Grass variant ends on the same exact end board. Because Jameer and Goatee Cosmos offer us so much protection, 
we can wait to wipe the board with our fish sink rows after they have already used up most of their extenders. So after we wipe the board, then they won't be able to play anymore. Though you do want to make sure that you activate Jameer and Goatee Cosmos before your opponent summons a monster that can negate spell and trap cards or can negate monster effects. Now this Spiral Link monster gains quite a lot of card advantages, so I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to Synchro into Askan. Unfortunately, the Link monster cannot be targeted because the field spell protects their Spiral monsters from targeting. So I go for the field spell instead, banishing the field spell, and then adding Snopios to my hand. We'll then use Askan to banish a fish to special summon itself. They activate another field spell. We do currently have more than eight fish banished, so we will be able to use all three effects of Goatee Cosmos. We're going to respond to this Link Monster with Ymir, and they happen to activate a Droplet. But they happen to have a Droplet, so there goes Ymir and Dragite. Another reason to consider activating Jameer before the main phase 1 of your opponent's turn. So we have two more disruptions left on the field. We have Shift, which can be used to summon Deep Beyond. But if we summon Deep Beyond, then we'll wipe the board and we won't be able to really take advantage of Goatee Cosmos. And we also have our Goatee Cosmos. And because we have more than 8 fish banished, we can activate Goatee Cosmos to Synchro Summon any fish Synchro. We'll go into a Wider or Whale to destroy their Link Monsters. They'll Link into another Spiral Monster. And because we activated Goatee Cosmos, our shift will no longer be negated by Droplet, so we can summon Deep Beyond. We'll activate shift. Using Askan, we will Synchro Summon into our Deep Beyond. And with that, we'll wipe the board. Now it does look like they're out of extenders. We still have Askan and Zep in the graveyard, so we could use Snopios to banish them from the graveyard and summon another Deep Beyond. So looking at the combo, the first thing we want to do is we want to normal summon our Leaf Fish. If the opponent has an Imperm or Ash Blossom, there's a 99% chance they will use it on it. If Leaf Fish is not negated, then you can send Coelacanth to the graveyard. We can activate Monster Reborn if we happen to have it to special summon Coelacanth from the graveyard or we can special summon Abyss Shark, use Abyss Shark to add a fish to our hand, and if we don't have a Coelacanth in the hand, then we can use Small World to add it to our hand. We'll need non-fish monsters as bridges for Small World. We have Shathana, and we also have Ice Jade Tremora. Now that we have two water monsters on the field, we can Link Summon into Abyss Keeper. Use the Best Keeper's effect to special summon Coelacanth to one of the zone it points to. We'll activate Coelacanth, discarding one card as a cost to special summon a level 1, two level 2 tuners, and a Leaf Fish. Using the level 2 tuner and Coelacanth, we will Synchro Summon into a Ravenous Croco Dragon. Croco Dragon lets us draw a card for each tuner that was used to special summon it. Then we can Synchro Summon into our Coral Dragon using the level 4 fish and the level 2 tuner. We can then Synchro Summon into White or Monoceros using the level 1 fish and Coral Dragon. On Chain Link 1, we'll activate Monoceros to target Coelacanth in the graveyard. And on Chainlink 2, Coral Dragon will let us draw a card. Monoceros then special summons Coelacanth. Now we have to make sure that our toggle is on. 
Shift will banish itself from the graveyard, targeting Coelacanth. This triggers Coelacanth's effect. If Coelacanth is targeted, you can tribute one fish and then negate and then negate the effect of the card that targeted it. Negating Shift doesn't matter, and if your toggle is off, you will not be able to activate this effect. This allows us to get rid of Abyss Keeper, which cannot be linked away the turn it is summoned. Now, we can link away Monoceros and Croco Dragon into Merence's Coral Anemone, because we're going to need more room for fish to summon from the deck. This will be the start of our second loop. Coelacanth will then activate its effect to special summon another level 1 fish, two level 2 tuners, and a level 4 fish. You want to keep track of how many you have in your deck. If you don't have enough, then you'll have to use Leaf Fish to shuffle them back into the deck. And we want to make sure that we have all three of our goatee tuners in play. And by this point, we should have Pacey, Shift, and Zep all on the field or graveyard. We'll then synchro into Arian Post. Arian Post will banish Snopios from the deck. Snopios will banish the fish from the graveyard. It can be any fish. Except Pacey's, we'll need that later. Then we will add it to the hand. Now we can Synchro Summon into Dragite using Arian Post. Arian Post hits the graveyard. We'll banish Croco Dragon. We'll add Enoch to the hand. Using Marinz's Coral Anemone, we'll special summon our Paces from the graveyard. Paces then special summons Enoch. Enoch, when special summoned, lets us special summon a level 4 fish from the banish zone. We're going to bring back our Paces. Using Paces, the level 1 fish and Coelacanth, we will then synchro summon into Ice Jade Jameer. We will then banish Enoch to add Goatee Cosmos to the hand. To put more fish in our banish zone, we will banish Leaf Fish to shuffle three fish back into the deck. Preferably, you want to shuffle Arian Post, and you want to shuffle any second or third copies of our Goatee Tuners to avoid having to worry about our opponent using Call by the Grave on our Goatee Tuners on their turn. Now we can banish two more fish, activating Snopios from the hand. We'll use it to banish Paces and another fish. Now both Paces and Shift are banished. Snopios will target itself, so when it leaves the field, we'll be able to add it to our hand. And our banished zone is now looking pretty thick. We have nine cards banished, eight of them are fish. One of them was banished face down with Small World, so that one won't count. Getting eight or more fish banished on the opponent's turn to activate Goatee Cosmos' final effect will require us to use Snopios and Askan to banish more fish. And what I really like about this combo is that we're drawing three cards with Croco Dragon, Coral Dragon, and Leaf Fish. So there's a good chance we'll draw into at least one of our hand traps. And the follow-up play is really strong with this deck. And the other way of summoning Coelacanth is using our old friend Dugaris, sending Coelacanth to the graveyard with Leaf Fish, then using Leaf Fish and a level 4 extender to Exe summon into Dugaris. Dugaris will special summon Coelacanth from the graveyard. And then we will summon four fish from the deck. The same four fish as our previous combo. Because Dagaris isn't a fish, we won't be able to use Shift and Coelacanth to tribute it away. So we will have to use Kroger Dragon to get rid of it. This does mean you'll have to discard two cards, but Kroger Dragon and Coral Dragon both lets us draw two cards so it won't really hurt us that much. Now that we've drawn two cards, we can activate Croco Dragon, discarding two cards we don't need to destroy Dugaris. Once we get rid of Dugaris, then we summon Marinth's Coral Anemone, and then from here on out, we'll do the exact same combo that we did with our Abyss Keeper combo. So with this deck, you really only have a 67% chance of doing a Coelacanth combo. And if you're just doing a standard Goatee combo, then you'll have an 85% chance of summoning Askan and then Deep Beyond. This gives us a total of 90% consistency. Sadly, this doesn't really leave a lot of room for hand traps and board breakers. If I had to change the deck, 
I'd add two knee brews for some more going second power. And to show you how massive the consistency hit to go to coelacanth is after foolish brew goods was limited, we can check out the consistency of this deck if we added two foolish burials to increase the deck size to 42. We would have an 85% chance of doing a coelacanth combo, with a total of 97% consistency. So coelacanth has seen better days, Foolish Goods was limited to 1 to nerf Tier Laments. Hopefully Foolish Goods will become unlimited again when Tier Laments leaves the meta. And that's all I have to say about this deck. For now, I'll see you guys next time.